Hello and welcome to this episode of Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about battery care and maintenance. When you buy a product, your batteries usually come about half charged. It's always a good idea to first charge your battery using the supplied charger before you even turn on your drone. When installing batteries into your drone, you want to be careful. Every battery is a little bit different, including the Q500 and the Typhoon H, as well as the Breeze. On a Typhoon H, we have a locking tab. It's always a good idea to pull up on that locking door, slide it in, make sure it's fully seated, and then close the door. Same goes with the Q500. You open the battery door, you want to make sure this slides in nice and straight, and you get a good connection. Just give it a slight nudge forward, that way it locks in place, and then shut the door. If your door did not shut, chances are the battery's not properly installed. So give it another go. On a Breeze, it's just as simple. You just slide it in, it'll automatically lock to the back of the Breeze, and you're good to go. Whether charging your battery or using your battery in flight, there's a few steps that you want to do to make sure you're managing your batteries properly. In flight, you want to keep an eye out on your battery usage throughout the entire flight. It's easy to do with our products as we have telemetry data giving you live feedback of what those batteries are doing and how they're performing in flight. When you get to that first low battery warning, it's a good idea to start bringing the drone back and get it closer to yourself. You never really want to go into that second battery warning unless you absolutely need to. However, our transmitters as well as our batteries and our drones give you fair warning to get it on the ground. You have approximately about five minutes usually in a flight when you get that first battery warning. That second battery warning is about a minute or two. So you want to make sure you get on the ground and safely land your aircraft at that time. Battery management is also affected when you're charging or discharging your battery pack. When charging your battery packs, you want to make sure you're using our supply charger as well as the balance lead on top of that. Balancing your cells is very important as it keeps each individual cell exactly the same as the other. If one cell gets too high or one cell gets too low, it can potentially damage your battery pack and lo lower the overall lifespan of that pack. Now using your battery packs isn't the only time we're, we need to worry about battery management or battery care. Long term or short term procedures should be used to maintain your battery and keep it in tip top shape. When storing your LiPo battery short term, it's always a good idea not to fully charge your battery packs. Always go to about half charge. Leaving the battery on the charger half the amount of time you usually do should suffice. When we're talking about long term storage, this is where it becomes more critical. You want to make sure that we fully charge our battery packs, we're going to slide it into a drone, and we're going to wait until we get to those halfway mark on the telemetry data that's coming in. We can then land and remove our battery and put it in a nice, cool, dry space. You don't want it too hot or you don't want it too cold. Room temperature will be just fine. Speaking of temperature, LiPo batteries are affected by either extreme hots or extreme colds. Our drones won't be able to fly as fast or with as much authority as a normal day. To combat this, it's always a good idea to keep your batteries in a nice warm car or indoors before using them outside. Vice versa, on hot, warm days, your batteries will produce a lot more power and your flight times will also get reduced. And this is due to the increased flow or amp draw that the batteries can provide. One other effect that heat can do to your batteries is expand your batteries. So after a flight, you may notice that your packs will become slightly puffed or they're extremely hot to the touch. It's a good idea to pull your battery out and get it to a cool, dry place before you start charging. Charging your battery after a flight, you want to pull the battery out and get it into a nice, cool, dry area. Let the battery fully cool off before you charge it. Now that you know a little bit about battery maintenance, battery storage, and battery safety, go out, charge your packs, and let's go for a flight.